addict, alcoholic, drug dealer, thief, prep school kid, Division I athlete, TED Talk presenter. My name is Duncan Whirling, and I am all of those things. Before getting sober a year ago, and well before transferring to Creighton University this past January, I thought I had my life under control. Now, that definition of control looked a bit like this. I was doing cocaine out of my college locker room. I was blowing off class to moped to the beach while eating magic mushrooms. And I was abusing excessive amounts of Xanax to skip from a Monday to a Friday. That chapter of my life did not end well. And that was not control. So, how did my journey into sobriety begin? 371 days ago, on the evening of April 15th, 2017, I came to the end of a week-long binge. Originally begun after having received news of my third consecutive failed drug test for marijuana. I was at a teammate's barbecue and decided to call it a night after having taken 24 milligrams of Xanax a couple hours prior to numb the feelings that I was feeling. I began to walk back towards my apartment in California. I knew that waiting for me at home was a handful more and plenty of liquor. My plan, my solution to this and the countless other problems that I had let go unattended was to overdose. Knowing that that combination of chemicals would slow my heart rate until it stopped beating altogether. My last memories of that night consist of collapsing onto my couch, hoping that I had surpassed that threshold and drifting into oblivion. But oblivion never came for me. Instead, I woke up Easter Sunday, April 16th, 2017. And now today, that is 370 consecutive days of sobriety, or in my mind, 370 24 hours and one day at a time. Each of which, in their own way, has led me to this spot right here, right now. I'm not here to tell you how special I am. I wish I were, but I'm not. I'm not unique, and neither is my story. No. Today, I hope to spark an honest conversation between friends when the time is right by sharing what has led me from that dark place on that dark night to this stage and this spotlight. Learn, listen, and love. I'll start with learn. Learn how to engage with one another on a personal level. Don't just settle for drinking buddies or fair weather friends. My first roommate in college taught me this lesson. We never took the time to get to know each other on a personal level. I moved out abruptly after Halloween to prevent any physical escalation. It then took two weeks of living out of my locker room and couch surfing before I found permanent housing. The whole time before, during, and for many months after, my excuses were endless for how I possibly could have found myself in that position, resenting him for being unfair to me, for not understanding me, not listening to me, not respecting boundaries, did you hear all the me, me, me's? It was all about me. Reflecting today, what actually happened was I expected him 
to act a certain way, completely oblivious to the real person who thinks, feels, and has opinions just like I do. Ethan, I am sorry. This was a tough lesson for you, for me to learn, and I did not make it easy on you either. But without it, I probably still would have no experience in feeling my feelings, learning how to support another human being, engaging, speaking up, sharing that thought that gets stuck in the back of my throat. Now I can give it a voice, and now my voice is heard. This brings us to number two. Listen. This is a big one for me. For the past 20 years, I have spent so much energy focused on myself, my image, and my reputation. It was never about what the other person was saying. Instead, just like before, me, me, me. Anticipating how good hearing myself speak sounded. Where or when did I begin to learn how to open my ears and just listen to the other? In rehab. Our counselors had a share and share and share. Eventually, our defenses began to come down and we each told our story. The young men that I went through this time with were no stranger to a criminal record, the majority of which predominantly arrived on court orders. But I had no record. I was here by choice. So I did what I do best. I judged and jumped to conclusions. See, before learning this lesson of listening, I had been content living my life in self-pity believing that my thoughts and feelings were ugly, convincing myself every single day that I was unique, special, and alone. I was scared. How could I listen? What if my voice isn't heard? What if I am ostracized for feeling other? What if my truth rocks the boat? I was full of what ifs. But then, Zach, Chris, and the rest of my pioneer brothers, you shared your experience, strength, and hope with me, and I began to listen for the first time. Something inside me clicked and all of my what-ifs melted away. Consequently, I was finally able to step outside of myself, and I saw for the first time that I was not alone, and I never had been. Quite simply put, a woman once told me, listen to yourself and listen to your peers. But when listening, try this. Don't listen for what makes you different than them. Listen for the commonality you share. You'll find it. And finally, the reason I stand here today, love. That night, April 15th, the night which I hoped would be my last, someone saved me. My best friend and former team captain, who had hosted the team barbecue at his apartment that night, has told me since that as I left, I had kept telling him, I got this, I'm fine, I have a plan, really, don't worry about me. So he let me go. And even now, a year later, he still can't explain it, but After I had walked into the night, something just didn't feel right. But instead of ignoring that feeling and just going to bed, he trusted his gut and followed me home, catching me as I began to walk up the steps to my apartment. After confronting me on those steps and asking me about what I had taken, 
how much I had taken, how much more I had inside, how I felt, and why I had done it. I could do nothing but watch as he proceeded to search my apartment, clearing it of all the remaining pills I had, and pouring all the liquor down my sink. Knowing my roommate wouldn't be back until the morning, he sat with me on that couch, telling me everything is going to be okay, and that tomorrow is a new day. All I had to do was make it to the morning. Chase, because of you, I watched that sunrise. If you had not taken the time to learn who I was, you never could have known how desperate I had become. If you had not listened to my voice that night and trusted your gut and followed me home, you never would have followed me home, sorry. And if you had not taken the time to love, I would not have awakened that morning. My parents would have lost a son, my siblings a brother. These words do not do it justice, but thank you to you. Now, 370 mornings later, I would not have been able to turn the stereotypes of my past, drug dealer and thief, into the learning lessons which they have become for me. 370 mornings later, I have found my voice, can tell my story, and most importantly, have begun to realize that the demons which haunted me then and still today have the ability to haunt us all. I don't know your face, and I don't know your name, but please hear me when I say, whoever you are, you are not alone. Stay until the miracle happens and make it to the morning. Maybe, like it was for me, the sun will rise as soon as someone in your life pauses simply to Learn, listen, and love.